Just, uh, <coughs> anyway, very good morning. We'll start. Chalo. See, we started with uh, Ophidias. Hello. And uh, I see a few new PGs joining in for today's class. So we'll have a quick revision of what we had discussed so that we have a continuity and you get connected. OK. So what did we discuss in the last class? We mainly classified snakes. OK. And there was a purpose in we classifying snakes. What was the purpose of classifying snakes? OK. So like, you know, we basically classified, which we had taken from uh, the books, toxicological books and from the Google, we classify snakes mainly into two, poisonous and non-poisonous. And our focus was mainly on the poisonous snakes. So poisonous snakes, again, they're broadly classified into three varieties. What were they? Huh? Viperidae, Elapidae, and Hydrophidae, you know, sea snakes, basically. Now, what was the uh, uh, main key points in uh, Viperidae? Okay, and what remedies will come under Viperidae? We have, see, we classified into Viperidae, and Viperidae toxin is mainly hemotoxin. So, from our pathogenesis or from our uh, Materia Medica, from our clinical experience, we have seen majority of the snakes belonging to Viperidae, they have more of hemorrhagic tendencies because Viperidae venom has more of hemotoxin. We also try to cl clarify in the last class, not that Viperidae will not have neurotoxin. They also have neurotoxin, but hemotoxin is more. Similarly, the other one we spoke was Elapidae. And what was the uh, important example we discussed under Elapide? Naja. Naja, Naja. King Cobra. Okay. And uh, King Cobra, if you see, the action is more neurotoxin. Neurotoxin. Okay. So you see more of paralysis. The cause of death in uh, Viperidae is mainly low blood pressure, hypovolemic shock. Okay hypoxia and then they go into death. In uh, uh, the other uh, snake that we saw, the main effect is neurotoxin. Okay? So there will be paralysis of the respiratory muscles and then they go into coma and death. See now this is very, very important. This will help us understanding the pathogenesis of our remedies. Okay? And we also saw one uh, snake related to uh, sea snake. Okay? So that was the basic classification. We also try to understand the sphere of action, keeping these things in mind. Hmm? So sphere of action, a quick recall, mainly on the CNS, CVS, blood, yes, glands, skin, kidneys, male and female genitalia. So probably this is where, uh, yeah, one second. Okay, see now this is where uh, we are stopped and a quick recall, see heart, acting on the heart, the Ophidia mainly weakens the action of the heart. Okay, and we were also trying to understand the commonest Ophidia acting on the heart. We have, uh, the remedies stopping the list will be Naja and Lacasis. We also have Sencris, Cotalus Cascavella and Cotalus Horridus acting on the heart. Similarly, we looked at the action on uh, the blood. It will cause decomposition of the blood, hemorrhages, septicemia. Topping the list here will be Cotalus horridus, Lacasis, Bothrops, Cotalus cascavella, Elaps, Vipera. And uh, I had taken a small uh, piece of information from uh, E.F. Harrington. And what was the information given? Naja has least hemorrhages. Okay, so when you have a Ophidia coming up in the repertorial totality and the patient has no hemorrhage, okay, you can think of Naja. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll see what else we had understood in the last class. We spoke of uh, this being a glandular remedy, okay, and uh, skin, the cellular tissue, very important, we'll be discussing 
more in detail in today's class the cellular tissue and of course uh, the male and female genitalia okay now we have stopped there we also spoke of two more points diathesis hmm? majority of the ophidias they are hemorrhagic diathesis okay and we also spoke of the miasm hmm? if you look into ophidias all the three miasms might be included but when you look at the predominant miasm it is mainly psychosyphilitic very good psychosyphilitic miasm hmm? okay psychosyphilitic and then uh, we will continue with uh, the physical generals of ophidias okay hmm? we look at the side affinity hmm. we look at the side affinity see now the tragedy is when we talk of ophidias we know only few ophidias okay and the ophidia that we are all very familiar with is lacessis and few of us also know a little of uh, crotalus so whenever we talk of ophidias we'll be keeping only lacessis in mind and uh, from the information we know we all know lacessis is left sided now everything looks like ophidia and you know when the person says the affections are more on the right hand side that's when we get a little disappointed because we know that the predominant ophidia lacessis is predominantly left sided so this becomes very very important for you which side the ophidia affect majorly ophidia affect the left side majority of the ophidia but but there are few ophidia out of the 11 ophidia that we discussed in the last class there are few ophidia which predominantly act on the right side okay so any wild guess which are those ophidia very good crotalus horridus elaps good we'll discuss about elaps a beautiful remedy then so we have crotalus horridus crotalus cascavilla and elaps three remedies which predominantly act on the right hand side okay now similarly if you look at the thermus thermus if you look at the information that we know about snake snake lives in burrows burrows snakes lives in cooler environment and uh, summer is the season where we see snakes coming out hmm? you know i mean especially in the urban world we have occupied all the snake area and uh, you see snakes coming out in summer they can't bear heat so largely ophidia sir hot patients okay okay but nausea and elaps are two ophidias which can be chilly hmm nausea and elaps are two ophidias which can be chilly otherwise predominantly all the ophidia sir uh, hot patients okay so that was with thermus see when you look at the ailments from when you look at the causative factors what are all the common causes or what are all the common causative factors you have in ophidias okay see now uh, uh especially vijay kar sir says ophidia is a very ophidia and then uh, ophidia is a very timid creature what they say is ophidia is a very timid creature okay we are all afraid of snake and uh, it is told snake is equally afraid of uh, human beings okay so what do you see here is like uh, from my sir's uh, learning sir says when it comes out of the hood you know sorry when it comes out of the what is it burrow it first looks left right it looks at the surrounding and if it feels everything is fine only then it comes out okay so a timid creature naturally you will see ailment should be from fright so ailment from fright stage fright okay ailment from fright stage fright and a very beautiful thing you have in uh, ophidia is ailments from jealousy okay this we have uh, experienced 
or this we have seen in clinics. I don't know if you remember, uh, I had shared a small case in some other class, or it was a very recent case of a girl who had fever. I've shared this. Don't act uh, as if you know you are listening this for the first time. Okay, fine. So what, is, what was this case was? This case was of a girl who was some six or seven years old girl. You know, she had high fever. And in fever, she was blabbering, she was talking too much. She was in a delirious state when she was brought to the clinic. So what do we ask uh, when there is fever? What does Hanuman say in aphorism number five? Huh? Yes, very good. Exciting cause. So she has fever. So then there should be some exciting cause. Now what was the exciting cause? Mother delivers another baby. Okay? And uh, she goes, I don't know if Vinod was there. Mona had taken this case, my assistant. And uh, she goes to the hospital. And everybody who are coming, they are more behind the newborn. And so nicely this girl was telling in uh, our local language that uh, uncle, everybody they are looking at my brother. Nobody to ask about me. Before him, everybody would come and uh, say, Chinnu, how are you, this, that and all. No, nobody is looking at me. Everybody is bothered about my brother. And you know, she was jealous about the entire situation. So we took ailments, jealousy from, and we took uh, loquacity, heat during. And uh, the remedy that comes up uh, is lacases. And uh, the beauty is, next day morning, the girl goes to school. Mother has sent me a WhatsApp message telling, uh, Sir, uh, my child is absolutely fine, and she's gone to school. OK. So fast our medicines can, can, can uh, uh, you know, cure. At this stage, I'll share an again a very small case, not related to Ophidia, but I want to share this case. Two days back, I was there in the clinic in the mornings, in the morning, and uh, there was an emergency. Now, what was the emergency? Very rarely in a homeopathic setup, we have emergency cases coming up. And many times, we homeopaths are not prepared to deal with emergencies. You know what the emergency was? Uh, a couple who had, uh, to, who had to visit me, they were waiting in the waiting area. And this lady, she had uh, got her uh, sister's son, niece, with her. Okay? And this boy, three years, two and a half years old boy, he threw a conversion. Okay? Waiting area, all the patients are waiting. I am I'm attending another patient, and then suddenly they rush in. Sir, emergency, emergency. Okay? Trust me, I really don't know who this child is. This child is not my patient. Fine? But it's an emergency. This child has thrown a conversion. Now, how do you deal with this case? They got into my chamber, fine, and uh, I took them into another chamber which has an examination uh, hall. <laughs> After five, seven minutes, this child goes out. I could not record. Why I could not record? You know, we were in a different mode. We were in a different state. It was a panicky state. You know, the lady who got this child, she was, uh, my wife, luckily that day my wife was there. It was her time, I was there. I was a chief guest there, it was her time, but luckily she was there and my wife was managing only the, that lady because that lady was feeling so guilty that you know my sister's son, I brought him and you know he threw a conversion. How do I face my sister? She is going into a panic and my wife was exclusively taking care of her. Fine, you know we had a team taking care of the lady and I and one more uh, you know as receptionist of mine, we are taking care of this boy. Okay, now please let me know. How do we go ahead? I told you it's not my patient. I don't have the history. I don't know who it is. I don't know if it is if she is a boy, if she is a girl. Nothing. It's an emergency situation. He's throwing a conversion. Fine. Yes, fast. How do you go about? Huh? Presentation. The man gave that child to me. Fine. And the child is uh, in a convulsive state, throwing a conversion and I'm holding him and you know, we placed him on the bed. Okay, yeah, what else? What else? Huh? Okay, what, what first aid? Yeah, see now this is where our uh, allopathic, uh, you know, knowledge, our 
nursing home knowledge. Our working in nursing home will help us. How you place the child, which position you place the child, all those things will become very important. Okay, good. You do that. I've done it. Then what next? Now let our homeopathic thing also get in, no? Huh? Okay, see. Why? Why? He, now, very important here. Okay. We know that's a question, why? I don't have the answer. But what could be the reason for why? What could be the reason? Why did this child throw a conversion? Huh? Okay. It was a simple case. Let me make things clear for you. It's a febrile seizure. Okay. So relax. Don't think of uh, big, big things because I did not have time to think big things. It's an emergency situation. Now it's a febrile conversion. I'll make it easy. So what? What next? What next? They had taken an appointment with a pediatrician. They thought they'll finish with me, you know, those two uh, elderly people, and then they thought they'll go to the pediatrician. Unfortunately, in my clinic, he threw a conversion. Fortunate or unfortunate? No issues. Now, how do you go ahead? What do you do? What do you do? Fast, fast. First thing, temperature. First thing, check the temperature. Okay, it was some 103 plus. Okay, done. So, what is the second thing? What is the second thing? Okay, you do tepid sponge, fine, do. But I, I mean, I want the homeopath in you to get enlightened. I know Dr. Krishna Das, Dr. Sunil, they are uh, right. Sir, do first aid. Okay, sponge him. Yeah, you place him. Yes, all that done. Huh? Yeah, what is the medicine? How do you decide the medicine? I don't have a history. We don't have mother scolded, something happened. And the lady whom I should ask, Sita has become pale. I told you know my, my, my wife is taking her BP, there are people you know attending her, get her water, this and that. She is exclusively with her. I have no history. Fine. And the beauty, beauty is, beauty is, the receptionist, you know, went mad. Why she went mad? Sir, somebody in conversion walks into one chamber of yours, we take them into another chamber. After five minutes, the child walks and goes out. It was a beautiful, uh, what is it, uh, uh, impression for the patients who were sitting. Okay? Trust me, if he had gone to an allopath, with due respect to allopathy, I've got nothing against. I worked under, uh, I worked under allopaths, I worked in nursing homes. What do we do? Fine? Okay? We would have given him, uh, eh? yeah. Daisy Pam, Dr. Sunil. We would have sedated him, he would have been admitted, put an IV line, fine, and uh, scare them, do this, that, and all that stuff. Admission, a lot of things would have gone in. I have done first aid wherein we have given, uh, we take a small rice tube, small rice tube, put it into his uh, anal canal, and we inject uh, daisy palm, we sedate him, fine, and uh, you know, we give IM this, that, and all, uh, parastamol, and we uh, try to put in an IV line, emergency situation. Fine? We are trained, create a panic. So we create an emergency situation. But this is not an allopathic setup, this is my clinic. And you know, what I am trying to tell you is, uh, you have to be equipped to deal with such emergencies. Okay? Simple, uh, high fever, done, and uh, head hurt, extremity is cold, sudden thing, you know, they were sitting there and suddenly the child throws a conversion. We have no clue, we have no history. If the child has had an episode before, we have no history. Fine? High fever, head hot, extremity is cold, suddenness, uh, conversion. Nothing doing. Belladonna. Belladonna, when I'm single dose. Single dose. Fine? Single dose of belladonna. And after five minutes, you know, the child, it, it's, it's like a drama, it's like a movie. But you should trust me. Fine? If you don't trust me, I'll give you my receptionist number. You can just check with her what exactly happened. You know, they are the people who saw, who visualized how exactly the things unfolded. And uh, yesterday, the receptionist was probably telling to my, all my assistants, you missed yesterday something. <laughs> you missed something in the morning, you know. There was a child who came. She, she told, he, he came, you know. He just walked. walked out. And that's a beautiful thing, you know. I, I rarely get such uh, cases in my clinic. And I was very happy that I got something like this and I was happy. It happened in my place, it happened in a homeopathic clinic and the child walked away. Otherwise it would have been a big disaster. Okay? 
and uh, night also they updated they gave me a call child is absolutely fine no further episodes of fever so now people who feel homeopathy cannot do anything in emergencies these are uh, eye openers okay these are eye openers fine so just focus keep your allopathy knowledge use how much you want don't medicate the management definitely is going to help you but ultimately never forget never uh, feel low always feel high always feel proud you are homeopaths and you can do great wonders so we'll just that was a beautiful case of belladonna done we'll get back to lacases this child based on the small situation ailment jealousy from delirium loquacious we had given her lacases okay so ophidias have fright stage fright jealousy okay moving ahead uh, they also have not this they also have deep sorrow if you look, look at uh, ailments from in your repertory profound grief ophidia is one of the top remedies okay ailments from loss of fluids yeah ailments from onanism okay see sex and ophidia there is a long uh, history okay Uh, in the last class i was trying to tell you many uh, in the chinese uh, what is it history they believe uh, snake venom is a great aphrodisiac okay fine and many uh, you know in looking into our uh, tradition or looking into the other things many pray uh, snake as a god you know for the uh, sexual pleasure fine so sexual excess onanism vexation you are fed up with things and uh, you also know a lot about this particular thing alcoholism and ophidias we'll discuss a little later but for time being ailments from alcohol alcoholism okay and uh, this is also a beautiful thing we have ailments from disappointed love okay now dr vinod uh, in my absence he had taken a case in my clinic few days back and he had nicely taken the case and he had sent me on whatsapp so what do we prescribe it was an acute case okay and the ailment there was uh, disappointment in love then and the remedy we had given was ignisha this happened on monday two days back two three days back ignisha one m was prescribed i mean what i'm trying to tell you is why i'm trying to bring in cases here is to make you understand to make you feel what theory we study can 100% applied in our practice it is a reality then so ophidias also have ailments from disappointment in love okay and we also have ailments in summer you know summer i told you they can't tolerate sun more than summer which is the uh, season that gets affected in uh, ophidias which is the season more than summer the season is spring spring <coughs> i was reading katherine colter so there the author says spring is the season where the snake sheds its skin there is a terminology for that ha huh? molting you see snake shedding its skin so the shedding of skin happens uh, in spring okay so spring and ophidias there's lot of uh, connect you see even under uh, modalities spring aggravation you have ophidias highly placed there okay so spring aggravation summer aggravation and disappointment in love these are all the ailments from so any uh, more ailments you would like to add or you got an idea we started with uh, fright then we also spoke of jealousy, jealousy uh, vexation alcohol onanism loss of fluids okay what is it disappointment in love and grief sorrow prolonged grief prolonged grief okay so prolonged grief which are all the other remedies we have natrums we have phosphoric acid we have orums okay and you can also think of ophidias acute grief we have mainly ignisias we have discussed this in some class ignisia is a top remedy for uh, uh, what is it uh, acute grief acute grief okay so we'll move ahead we look at the other 
physical genitals of Ophidia. Hope you are getting an idea. We started with different snakes. We also tried to identify the snakes with their pictures, looked at the spear of action, pathogenesis, slowly thermals, diathesis, side affinity, ailments from, now we are looking at the uh, physical genitals. <clears throat> so what could be the probable physical genitals in Ophidias? Okay. We have all studied this in our third year. Group characters of Ophidia, we have all discussed this. What could be the probable uh, physical genders? Sleep hmm? huh? Sleeps into aggravation, yes. Dr. Ilam has a point. We'll discuss that. Constriction, aggravation, good. Thermally hot. Thermally hot, yeah, thermos we have discussed. Good, agreed. Tight clothing aversion. Tight clothing aversion. Menses, menses or flow amelioration. Any discharge, good. Not necessarily menses. Any discharge, we'll discuss. We'll talk of some examples so that you understand what I mean by discharges, amelioration. Okay. First and foremost, sensitivity. okay, sensitivity, sensitive to noise, sensitive to touch, good. It is there. Very good. The first very important thing is many of the Ophidias are bleeders. Many Ophidias are bleeders. So what do you see here is you have more of a hemorrhagic diathesis attributing to the hemotoxin that you have in Ophidias, what you see is the blood will be mainly dark red, hmm? non-coagulable. Okay? The clotting is getting affected. Hmm? There is bleeding, mainly dark hemorrhages, venous hemorrhages. Okay? Venous hemorrhages. And in some Ophidias, it can also be black. We'll discuss a little later. Which are those Ophidias in which you'll have black, black, black hemorrhages? Which is that Ophidia in which you have mainly black hemorrhages? Cotalus and elapse, elapse, elapse. Cotalus and elapse, very important. One of our objective was to differentiate Ophidias from each other. Hmm? Okay, so when you have more of dark, it is Ophidia, but when you have more of black, you can think of elapse or crotalus, elapse or crotalus, okay. Now, uh, <coughs> should we take up the other Ophidias having uh, hemorrhagic diathesis, meaning the Ophidias having hemorrhagic diathesis and we'll try to differentiate. So which are all the top Ophidias having uh, hemorrhages? Lacasis, crotalus, elapse, uh, bothrops, bothrops, and of course you also have vipera and uh, uh, yeah vipera. See now, lacasis as you know, bleeding from any orifice, and there dark hemorrhages, dark hemorrhages. Okay, if you are looking at crotalus, crotalus again has hemorrhages, hemorrhages mainly in cancerous affections, okay? For example, uh, CA bladder, okay, or any CA, and where you see too much of blood. Uh, I remember reading one author saying, more the blood, more it is portalous, okay? Fine? In CA, when you have more of blood loss, that author says, think of portalous solidus, okay? Now, elapse. Where do you see bleeding in elapse? Elapse, it is mainly hemoptysis. Okay? In elapse, bleeding will be because of a lung pathology. Hmm? And which side of the lung is getting affected? Right, right lung. Right lung, and you have more of hemorrhages, hemoptysis, you can think of elapse. Okay? Fine? And similarly, you also have bothrops. When bothrops? When you have clots. Especially clots in the eye. Clots in the eye. Fine. Epistaxis or clot in the brain. Stroke, apoplexy. There you can think of bothrops. Okay. And uh, vipara is mainly venous hemorrhage. Venous hemorrhage. Stasis and venous hemorrhage. Okay. So this is how you will have to 
practically differentiate uh, bleedings in Ophidias. Okay. <coughs> so I have just uh, made a statement taken from Dr. <coughs> e. Farrington. Hemorrhages are uh, seen in all Ophidias. Less in Vipara and least are nil in Naja. Okay, very, very important statement. So tomorrow, don't think of Naja in a hemorrhagic condition. You can think of some other Ophidias. Don't think of Naja. Okay. Now, very important, Dr. Vaishnavi and of course Minu was uh, trying to talk of this point. And what is this? Constriction. Okay. Constriction, aggravation. Done? Constriction, aggravation. So now what is this? Constriction, aggravation. Okay. Many of them in clinic, this is a very important point. Important ruling out point of Ophidias. Okay. Somebody comes with something tight like this. Okay. Upper button, they button this collar button or they wear a tight tie. Fine. Generally, we rule out Ophidias. Okay. Ophidias cannot tolerate anything tight. Not only around the neck, it can be anywhere. It can be waist, it can be hand, it can be thighs, it can be anywhere. They cannot tolerate anything tight. Very, very important. Okay. Now, which are all the other remedies which cannot tolerate tight around the neck? Okay. See now, for example, if it is more of an inflammatory thing, okay, for example, some inflammatory thing and then they are not able to bear something tight, that is not Ophidia. Okay. That according to Dr. E. F. Farrington, it is more of those inflammatory remedies. He says, think of aconite, think of belladonna, think of any inflammatory remedies. And again, inflammation and this part they can't touch, they will not like anything getting touched, so they want it free. That is again not Ophidia. Okay, it is Apis mellifica. Apis cannot, Apis is sensitive to touch. They will not like this, so they don't want anything. But in Ophidia, irrespective of inflammation, irrespective of that sensitiveness to touch, 24 bar 7, they cannot tolerate anything tight around their neck. Beautiful it is told, the eye cards, the tie, the necklace, there are people no, who choke it, necklace, no? Fine, like, you know, they want it to be seen. Fine? So that can't be Ophidia. Yeah? Ophidia might wear necklace, not that Ophidia will not wear necklace. They might wear necklace, but, you know, it has to be uh, loose. It can't be skin tight. This can't go and attach. <coughs> Fine? It can't go glue to her uh, neck. That's very important. So, Sensitiveness around the neck or even this is very, very important. What remedies come to your mind here? Lycopodium. Very good, lycopodium. Good. Calcarea. Bovista, good, I'm happy. You thought of bovista. Bovista. Now, how is it different from lacases? How is it different from lacases? Huh? I how is it different from lacases? Okay, fine. See now, very simple. One word, somebody. I, I appreciate, I got nothing. But what is that one word which differentiates the other remedies from Ophidias? When will Lycopodium want this to be loose? Or when Bovista wants it to be loose? When China wants it to be loose after eating? After eating? After eating? You have Lycopodium, you know, they might uh, loosen the belt or they might remove one uh, thing and they feel relaxed. So, in Lyco, in Bovista, the loosening is more because of gastric. It is more because of flatulence. It is more because of distension. In Ophidia, whether you eat, whether you don't eat, whether you eat full, whether you eat less, it is immaterial. It is immaterial. They want it to be loose. Okay? That is the... Uh, beauty in Ophidias. Now, why this is happening? Now, many times the problem with Materia Medica is we are not able to reason. Okay? And I have told you, the more you learn to reason Materia Medica, the more you will fall in love. 
the more you will understand things better. So great authors like E.F. Farrington, they were MBBS doctors and then they converted themselves into homeopathy. So their perception, their understanding is something that is different. So if you look at Dr. E.F. Farrington, he says, he goes back to the sphere of action. He says, Ophidias acts on nerve, the pneumogastric nerve. Okay? And he also says, it, it irritates the peripheral nerves. So this constriction in Ophidias is because of the irritation of the peripheral nerves. Anything tight comes, it irritates. So they want it loose. So this is what you have in Ophidias. Constriction aggravation. Okay? Hemorrhages. Moving ahead, you also see that the discharges, the discharges in Ophidias, they are very, very offensive. Not only offensive, the discharges are black. Again, I would like to mention uh, Catherine Coulter. I had uh, read Ophidias, nicely written in Catherine Coulter. The author says, the stools of snake is black. Okay? Fine, and it's very, very offensive. So discharges in uh, Ophidias, it could be from ears, it could be from any orifice, they are offensive. Okay? They can be dark, they can be bloody, or they can be black. They can be black. And uh, discharges ameliorates, very important. Discharges ameliorates. Okay? Discharges ameliorates. So going ahead, I have something. Very interesting here. What is it? Very good. Dr. Ilam has the answer right. Periodicity. Okay? If you look at the chapter, generalities, under that you have a rubric periodicity. And I was referring, <coughs> there are many Ophidias mentioned under periodicity. Okay? For not all Ophidias, many Ophidias. So Ophidias which have periodicity. We have Lacasis, we have Crotalus horridus, Cortalus cascavella, vipera, sencris. Okay, these are few remedies which have, uh, which have periodicity. Periodicity, alternate days. Every alternate days, you have symptoms coming up. One of the ophidias you can think of is Cortalus hoidus. Periodicity, every 10th day, every 15th day, yearly, it is lacasis. Okay? Again, periodicity which is annual, you also have synchrous. You also have synchrous. Okay? So, Ophidias have marked periodicity. Very important. Okay? So, we will go ahead, we will look at another very important aspect of Ophidia. A remedy predominantly acting on the nerves. So, what do you expect? Many of the Ophidias are paralyzers. Like bleeders, they can also be paralyzers. As a PG scholar, which of the Ophidias do you feel can cause paralysis? Both drops, very good. Naja, Lacasis, Vipera, okay, and of course Crotalus. Okay. See, though Lacasis and Crotalus has more of uh, hemotoxin, you also see them uh, affecting the nerves. So, both of Sencris, Crotalus, Naja, Lacasis, Vipera are great paralysis. Okay. Now, both drops, paralysis after apoplexy. Hmm? So, what is this? Paralysis after apoplexy means stroke, CVA. Cerebrovascular accident. So, paralysis after apoplexy, hemiplegia with aphonia. Hmm? Hemiplegia with aphonia. So, they have uh, issues with speech. Okay? The larynx might be affected and they might have issues with speech. Synchris, paralysis with aphasia. P is missing there, spelling mistake. Paralysis with aphasia. What is aphasia? So they will have uh, difficulty in speech because of uh, head injury or because of uh, brain damage. Okay. So synchris paralysis with uh, aphasia. Okay. There are only three remedies. 
mentioned in your uh, repertory, one remedy is Sankris. Okay? Paralysis ex uh, extending upwards. Somebody, I don't know, it was Mino or somebody you were talking of, Vipara. So what is that paralysis you have in Vipara? There is something called as GB syndrome. Huh? Wherein you see paralysis going upwards, extending upwards. So GB syndrome, you have uh, Vipara. Paralysis extending upwards. Okay? And uh, you know Lacassis, when there is left hemiplegia, you can think of Lacassis. When the hemiplegia is on the right hand side, four remedies will come up or four ophidias will come up. Topping the list you have Bothrops, Crotalus, Cascavella, Horridus and Elapse. Right sided hemiplegia. Hmm? Okay? Clear? So ophidias are great paralyzers, very important. So we will see the next area and what is this? We are looking at the action of ophidias on heart. When I mentioned you the spear of action, I did tell you that uh, specially Naja, Elapidae, group of snakes, they mainly affect the heart. Okay? And I also told you Lacassis also affects heart. Cotalus horridus, Cotalus cascavella, okay, Lacassis and Naja, even Vipera to a certain extent, they affect heart. Okay. And we also try to conclude in the last class. What is it that Krishna Das we concluded in the last class? In Naja, you see more of VHDs. In Naja, we see more of VHDs. And in Lacassis, we see more of RHDs. Hmm? Okay? A point taken from the stalwarts out of their experience. They have given you this particular statement. More of valves, think of Naja. More of RHDs, they say think of Lacassis. Though even under RHDs we have Naja mentioned, but it's more of Ophidias, more of Lacassis, which gets indicated. Okay. So another very important thing. Fine. Infl inflammation and fever of low types. Fever of destructive types. Septicemias. Cellulitis. Okay. Gangrene. These are few things where, as a homeopathic doctor, I have also used uh, Ophidias very often. Hmm? Okay. So we have uh, gangrene, malignant ulcers, diphtheria, typhoid, etc. wherein Ophidias can be indicated. Okay. Can you quickly recall the remedies for cellulitis? Cotalus. And what did I tell you in cellulitis, when Ophidias? I gave you an indication in the last class. When you are more of dark discoloration, okay? When you are more of dark, the inflamed part is turning dark, is turning black. And when you see a danger of gangrene setting in, there you can think of Ophidias, okay? Similarly, septicemia, it's not mentioned here, a better remedy will be Cotalus. Cotalus, Cotalus, okay? Carbuncles, fine. Okay, we see uh, Ophidia is getting indicated. Okay, so inflammatory fevers, low grade fevers. Uh, last evening I was looking at this, uh, we had a case. So I was looking at uh, the rubric menopause under female genitalia. You have uh, many Ophidias indicated under uh, menopause, 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 okay? We always have the opinion or we always have this bias feeling, it's only Lacassis. But then if you look into your repertory, many Ophidias like Crotalus, uh, Crotalus cascavella, they're all mentioned under the rubric menopause, okay? So m many of the menopausal uh, complaints, menopausal syndrome, based on the symptoms, you can think of uh, 
different different ophidias okay now moving ahead we'll also look at uh, the next point i'm trying to focus on the desires the desires of ophidias in general okay if you see what is it that they like oysters they also like cold things they also like cold things another very important thing many ophidias like is alcohol it is one of the best remedy for dipsomania in your repertory under mind dipsomania okay you have uh, alcoholism you have ophidias being mentioned okay another very interesting uh, desire is pork this is mainly seen in crotalus horridus desire for pork pig meat pork okay so these are few desires and uh, we will look at the modalities of ophidias in general okay what aggravates and what ameliorates now what aggravates sleep aggravates sleep aggravates they sleep into aggravation this itself is a beautiful uh, symptom past 20 25 years this symptom has been abused at least in my clinic whenever somebody is going into sleep aggravation it could be I, i'll just share a small case we have a case of a girl you know uh, again i was not in station i don't know if uh, yashasvina you know somebody has prescribed to this girl uh, she was coughing continuously for almost 4 or 5 days she was given antibiotic uh, for a day she was better again the mother left the child to the school and school authorities they called telling your child is coughing and now it is covid time we don't want uh, other kids to get infected please take her away okay so in spite of antibiotics she was not better they came to me i i really don't know what i prescribed because it was moon phase so must be uh, i had given a ressel and a center but then the child was not better mother again called sir even today the school people have sent her back in spite of your homeopathic medicines fine and you know what was the modality we got was any time she sleeps you know her cough increases simple modality and uh, a single dose of lecasis done and it did wonders okay so sleep aggravation never miss ophidias there are plenty of remedies in your repertory but out of experience or out of prejudice we know it is ophidia it is ophidia done so the moment they sleep one or you also have another contradictory thing here on waking up not necessary while sleeping on getting up the moment they get up they wake up with cough could also be an indication of ophidia getting up with cough or sleeping into aggravation very very important good one any other modalities that you can recall sleep aggravation second heat heat constriction aggravation heat aggravation then suppressed discharges absolutely right okay suppressed discharges flow in ophidias is very very important more the flow more better they feel for example uh, nose discharge getting uh, suppressed they take some uh, cold tablets and this gets stuffed up then they land up with headache it can be one of the remedy okay fine so if you look at yeah probably night lying sleeping very important uh, vaishnavi was talking of initially is sensitivity when you are looking at sensitivity you have touch and must be i also have noise the sensitive to both the sensitive to both but please remember a better remedy which is that better remedy aspirin huh? which is that uh, okay good i'm happy you are coming up with a list of remedies dr sunil is talking of asaram what is the speciality in asaram we had a very exclusive detailed class about asaram which is there in the youtube asaram is sensitive to the slightest noise how sensitive dr shilpa she is trying to tell even crushing of paper can irritate asaram very good and uh, you are talking of nux what happens in nux nux they going to irritation 
fine? Especially in sore cases, in fever, in acute cases, they are very, very sensitive to noise. We have noise in the background, okay? If you are next you would have got irritated. Done? So, noise aggravation, very important. And uh, Dr. Vinod is talking of a beautiful remedy. He did not mention a remedy, he has given you a group. Go to hell, do what you want. He has given you a group. And what is that group he is mentioning? Spider group. Never, never underestimate spider groups. Okay? I had a case very recently of a girl who had gone hysterical, who had gone crazy, who had gone into panicky mode. It's a huge, lengthy case. I tried with stramonium. Nothing, nothing happened with stramonium. And it was a very important case because there are a lot of other people involved in that case. Meaning, we had to show that our system, our medicines work. Fine, it was a challenge. It was, I, I don't say it was at the level of my ego, but it was a challenging thing because a lot of people were observing that case. There were students, there were interns, there were a lot of people observing. What this man will do, what, forget about this man, ultimately what homeopathy can do in this case because this case was a crazy case. Done? So, stramonium was given and uh, if I do remember, arsenic was given, nothing happened. Okay? And what was that, you know, that came up in the repertorial totality was tarantula. Tarantula. And this girl, any noise, no, she will shut her uh, ears. So, when you have a tarantula in your repertorial totality and if the patient is shutting her ears, sensitive to noise, the only remedy is very good. The only remedy is pteridion. Okay? Pteridion, whichever potency was available was given. It's almost 15 days or 18 days. The girl is much, I don't say she is normal. It was a state prescription. I need to sit with her, take her case in detail and prescribe. She had suicidal thoughts. Uh, you know, one point we also thought of uh, referring the patient to a psychiatrist because it was not under our control. That's why I told you many people were looking. Boss, what can you do in such cases? Okay? And uh, Teridian did wonders. So remember, sensitive to noise. A spider having uh, hypersensitivity to noise, just, just think of Teridia. Nothing, nothing else, only Teridia. Fine? These are beautiful things which you, I mean, I tested, I saw, it's better and I'm sharing, <coughs> and I'm sharing, okay? So, noise, touch, aggravates, and you also have summer, Elam has spoken this, suppressed discharges, aggravates, must be spring also should come. Yeah, spring should have come up here, an image is missing. Spring aggravation, okay? And what ameliorates? Discharges. Very good. Any discharges? <coughs> Flow ameliorates, discharges ameliorates. Now, this is what I wanted. See, anything that aggravates, opposite ameliorates. Fine? So, lying down, sleeping, not lying down. See, lying down could be just lying down. It is not lying down. Sleeping. Okay? There is a difference. When awake, you are better. Fine? And uh, cold. Cold, cold. Exposure to cold. Fine? And flow of discharge. Flow of discharge. We have congestive dysmenorrhea. Ladies telling, once flow starts, sir, it's seven, I am relieved. Fine? And exactly opposite, once flow starts, actia resimosa. More the flow, more the pain. Fine? Actia resimosa. These are the things that you should uh, remember. Never underestimate Alan's keynote. However big homeopath you are, however big books you read, Alan's is a beautiful remedy. I mean, it's a beautiful book, book, which has beautiful remedies and indications. You should be a master of Alan, Alan Keynote. I'm not talking of encyclopedia. Fine, Keynote, which has got the essence, hmm? the red line symptoms taken, okay? Now, one last uh, segment of today is what are the clinical indications of Ophidia? So, with this heading, we'll conclude uh, today's class. Clinically, where do we think of Ophidia? Huh? It could be in CVA, 
it could be stroke, hemiplegia, epistaxis, hemorrhages, varicose veins, agreed, huh? gangrene, heart diseases, VHDs, RHDs, cellulitis, gland, tonsillitis, ophritis, arcitis, any of those glands, fine, stroke, okay, then psoriasis, skin affections, psoriasis, carbuncles, okay, huh? Septicemia, good. Uh, septic fevers, typhoid. You have a list, you know, and the list can go on. So this, again taken from some source, should be from Dr. Clark's Materia Medica. Ulcers, many non-healing ulcers. Ophidias, they do wonders. Okay. Uh, polyneuritis, purpural fever, pyloresis, laryngitis, jaundice. We missed liver. Okay, and the remedy which stops Quetalus horridus, the remedy which stops, you know, inophidias, which has a better affinity for liver is Quetalus horridus. Okay, yeah, hemorrhoids, VHDs, yeah, majority of the things you have tried to cover: cough, uh, migraine, neuralgias, cardiac asthma, carbuncles, cardiac asthma, which is the remedy, Naja. Now here, here, Ophidia, Naja, okay. I, I, I remember a case, uh, you know, where I had uh, prescribed on the pathological basis because I did not get anything from the mind. His EF ejection fraction was almost 20, okay, very low and uh, Alopas could not do anything keeping his age in mind, okay. So what had happened is uh, he used to come from very far. Every time taking a taxi, asking his relatives to accompany, it was a big thing. And uh, pathology, if you see, there was more of valvular affection. So just looking at all those things, Naja was prescribed. And it's so beautifully improved. I don't say 60, 70 and all. It came up to 38, 40. And the best part was, uh, he could uh, come to Metro, through Metro he took a bus and came to my clinic meaning, you know, who was so dependent on others, with the homeopathy, with Naja, he could uh, manage life on his own, okay? So, uh, cardiac asthma or heart in general, you know, when indications favor, you can think of, you can think of Ophidias, okay? So, <clears throat> Quincy again, uh, beautiful uh, condition, where without surgery we can do wonders. And lacasis is one beautiful remedy. Almost a specific remedy when you have uh, left-sided quincy. Inability to swallow. Inability to swallow solids. Why liquids? Many times we think of ignitia. Fine, but ignitia is more at the level of function. Okay, when you have more of only inflammation. When you have more of a pathology setting in. And better solids aggravation liquids, like ignitia, but you have a deep-seated pathology. Okay, think of uh, lacasis. Hmm, think of lacasis. Okay, so any other uh, things you would like to add? Hmm? If there's nothing to add, you got a clarity? Fine. Ophidias. A very major uh, prescription of ours, they are uh, Ophidias. See what happens, I am sorry to use this word major prescription. See major prescription depends on what majorly you have understood. See if you have understood uh, Ophidias, then every case you will be looking for Ophidia. You will be prejudiced, fine. But what I was trying to tell you is, a major chunk of our practice uh, can be effectively dealt with Ophidias. Same with uh, the other group of uh, remedies we have, okay. Uh, to conclude, what I was trying to tell you is, is a very important uh, group and a thorough understanding is important. So physical generals, next Thursday I will try to take up the mind of Ophidias in general and then what we will do is, based on whatever remedies we have in your syllabus, each remedy will try to give you some uh, pointers and with cases, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, meaning uh, 
Dr. Vaishnavi is trying to ask any dark pigmentation, okay? Uh, can it be a, a indication? Can it be an entry point of ophidia? Possible, okay? Trembling tongue, like the dark pigmentation she was talking of, many times dreams, dreams of snakes, dreams of God, fine? They can be an opening pointer. But please don't go by these pointers. Now the only risk of going by pointers is, what is the risk? What is the risk of going by pointers? You ask them to put their tongue out and you see, see, you see some black dots. Your case taking is over. What will happen? You will have a lacassis ghost entering your mind. And what, what is the next thing you will do? You will ask all Ophidia questions. You will not like anything uh, uh, tight, no? Uh, the moment you sleep, everything will increase, no? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Without our knowledge, a Ophidia ghost will enter our mind and will start questioning in line of Ophidia. I would preferably keep it as a confirmatory thing. If it is there, good. Just make a note. But please be unprejudiced. The case may take you somewhere else. Or there may be many more remedies having black discoloration. Fine. If you open your uh, repertory tongue, okay, discoloration, black, you might get many more remedies. Why fix only with Ophidia? But if the case is Ophidia, fine, and if you have something like that, then it will be more uh, confirmatory. But never enter with a single point and mislead the patient. At least as youngsters, this should be your take home message. But our point was different. What was our point? Can that be Ophidia is what she is trying to ask. She did not tell, give Ophidia. It's a question. But I am trying to tell you, yes, it can be. But don't go only and only by that particular symptom. You will be into problems. You will be into problems. Done? But it can be. Fine? Similarly, like, you know, uh, Vijayaka sir talks of uh, any circular eruptions. Sir says, think of sepia. He says, think of sepia. See that great man, is, he never commits telling, give sepia. Fine, you should mind the words, very important. Think of sepia. Similarly, a dark pigmentation on the tongue or anywhere in your body, yes, can be Ophidia. Can be Ophidia, yeah. Sarasa has given this pointer, it can be Ophidia. Can be. Fine. If everything matches, yes, it can be. Okay. You know, thanks for that point. Must be missed it. Dark uh, pigmentations, dark, dark discoloration, they are uh, pointers towards Ophidia. Any more questions? All clear? Dr. Sunev? Thank you. Thanks.